Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan, the Chancellor of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, and welcome to yet another installment of Infinite Opportunities. This is our opportunity to talk to the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania about our 14 wonderful state-owned universities and about the remarkable daily accomplishments of administration, faculty members, staff members, and of course our marvelous student body, which reaches a number close to 100,000 statewide. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic and something that oftentimes people take for granted. We know our students are involved in academic programming. That's the heart and soul of each of our institutions. But it's also about student life, the experience side of what students take away from our 14 universities. And today we have three very, very important guests with us who are going to talk about their experiences and what they contribute to the issue of student life. With us today from Bloomsburg University, the Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Dion Somerville. Welcome, good doctor. We're Thank glad you. to have you with us today. Also with us from Shippensburg University, a junior majoring in finance, Ruben Bordell. Ruben, yes. welcome. Thank We're you. glad to have you. And uh, last but certainly not least, Angela Mason who is a senior majoring in human resource management at Shippensburg University as well. So to all three of you, thank you for taking your time to be a part of this panel today. And thank you for what you do at your universities to make student life the important component that it is and so enriching for our students. I'd like to start by going around the horn and just asking each of you to talk just a little bit uh, in this first segment about what you bring to the table uh, by way of student life. So Dr. Somerville, let's start with you. Well, the Division of Student Affairs at Bloomsburg University is a comprehensive unit that encompasses many of the out-of-class experiences for our students. So from athletics to counseling, dining, wellness programs, residence life, um, student activities, the student union, all of that is part of our goal and our mission. We really believe that it's part of the comprehensive education that students experience outside the classroom. Very much, very much so. Ruben, how about you? Uh, some things that I could say that we bring to the table, uh, student life, uh, is being involved with um, the resident assistant position, mm -hmm. also being a part of the orientation committee and a part of the orientation uh, team uh, there at Shippensburg University, also with some other small clubs and other side things to keep us busy. Especially important to the so many of the thousands of students who actually live on our university campuses, and that's a big yes. hallmark of our Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. Angela. Yeah, so um, down at Shippensburg, um, I'm also involved in, I'm with or, uh, Ruben on the orientation committee, um, so getting to see the students really come in over the summer in our fall welcome week and spring welcome week programs. Um, but I'm also on the student tour guide group, so kind of getting to see people come and then see them in the summer and the fall, and they're like, you gave me my tour, and it's really <laughs> exciting. So um, just being through the entire process. Um, something that I bring to the table for Shippensburg. Well, that's a great place to segue. Let's go to Clarion University, uh, which has a wonderful student life program. Let's spend a little time on the ground at Clarion University and see how they tackle the issue of student life. Students are at the center of everything that we do in student affairs. And we have to recognize that our jobs aren't about us. It's about ensuring that they have the best possible living learning environments so that they can grow and flourish. We are um, very dedicated to making sure that our students feel that they have an opportunity to grow and that we are providing them everything that we possibly can to do so in a safe and secure environment. Some of the more unique student life offerings that we have here at Clarion include the EFSN program, which is every Friday, Saturday night. It's an opportunity for our University Activities Board to make sure that our students are engaged in positive activities on the weekend. We also have the Civic Engagement Scholars Program, where through the gracious support of a benefactor, we're able to provide full tuition scholarships for students engaged in community service projects with local agencies. What is also new to the living environment at Clary University is we are offering living learning environments for our residential students. We are offering the Discover U floor for our exploratory freshmen, the Honors Program floor for our freshmen. We also have the Clarion Cares floor for the students that want to explore more in leadership. We are now going to be offering freshman housing designated only for the new incoming freshman class. 
This will be new starting in fall 2017, and we will be programming special for those incoming freshmen and making sure that their communities are designed with community assistance and also the programming aspects designed specially for the freshman incoming class. Probably the biggest changes that we've witnessed in student life here at Clarion University are the construction of our new suites, both the Hilltop Suites and the Suites on Main. Whenever we engage in projects at Clarion, we make sure that we get student input on it. Uh, student input has been crucial in terms of uh, the move towards suite-style residence housing. These types of living environments offer a little bit more privacy to our students, which they tend to like more than the community bathrooms and the community-style sharing from our old residence halls. A number of amenities have been added to our new residence hall space. We're really proud of CU Movies on Main. It's our new state-of-the-art movie theater in our suites on Main North. It shows movies that are free to students and also offers reasonably priced tickets for community members and their families. Uh, we also have the Starbucks, a nice little coffee shop on the corner. The bookstore is now located also in suites on Main, as well as the Denny's Den, which is a restaurant that the students can go to as well as the public if they choose so. Having updated facilities uh, allows us to meet student expectations and they also help instill a sense of pride uh, in our students and in their university community. They visit the, many of the amenities that are offered in the suites on Main, but then they also travel along to the other stores in the community and, uh, and bring business to their store owners as well. It's nice for students because they're in a close proximity to their living environment but also being right on Main Street, it helps engage the community as well. Invest in me. 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 I'll be your future public servant. I'll be your future advertising executive. I'll be your future accountant. I will be your future motivational speaker. I'll be your future lawmaker. I will be your future teacher. Invest in me. I'll be your future videographer. Well, welcome back to our panel, and I'd like to remind you that with us today we have Dr. Somerville, who's the Vice President for Student Affairs at Bloomsburg University. Uh, we have with us Angela Mason, who is a senior at, in, majoring in Human Resource Management at Shippensburg, and of course Ruben Bordeaux, who is a junior majoring in Finance, also at Shippensburg University. During this segment, I'd like to talk a little bit about the balancing act that it takes in today's world to be a student. We want our students to be great in the classroom and in the laboratory, but we also know that there's a balance with uh, not only all of the groups, clubs, and organizations that we talked about in our first segment, all the great social opportunities that students have, but also the fact that many, many of our students work at the same time to help supplement their academic endeavors. So I'd like to talk a little bit about how you all work with students and how your universities help students reach that balance in their lives. Angela, can we start with you in Chippensburg? Of course. Um, being a student worker myself, I work in the orientation office and I'm balanced about 10 to 15 hours a week um, on top of schoolwork. And I think that one thing that uh, Shippensburg University does really well is, is really our, our faculty and our professors. Um, they really work with the students and I mean they're so personable at Shippensburg. I know that if I'm like slacking off a, a, just a little bit um, or if I don't have a good quiz score, one of my professors is going to come up to me and be like, hey, are you, is everything working out? So I really have to give a lot of credit to our faculty and staff. Um, I think that, you know, it comes right from the top from President Jody Harpster and trickles down and Everyone just wants your success, so at the end of the day, no matter what, they're going to try to work with you and round your schedule. It's great to hear, and that relationship between faculty and student is really such an important part, not just the academic enterprise, but also just how well-rounded a student can be and, and meet that balancing act that's a big part of it. 
Ruben, how about you? Uh, I could say, uh, personally, from my experience of being a resident assistant for the past two years, uh, there's a lot of uh, programming that goes into us uh, putting on for our residents, also uh, giving them tips on how to uh, balance the work-school life. Uh, coming in as a first-year student, most of the first-year students don't have that idea, so we're kind of there to help them out and uh, shape them so that way they know that missing one class could be detrimental to the your rest of your semester. Uh, which a few of our uh, higher education people uh, actually put in place the system where uh, the first couple of weeks, uh, if a first year student may miss a course, uh, the RAs would get notified and we would uh, ask them to see what was, uh, what was going wrong uh, because part of our uh, duties is to make sure that these students make it to graduation, not just make it there for the first two years and then mm -hmm. uh, leave the institution. So uh, I feel as though the institution down at Shippensburg has put in a lot of uh, resources to uh, keep our students involved and uh, balance their work uh, uh, life with uh, their cl club life. Dr. Somerville, you're an expert. You do this for a living. Uh, of course, if you had students like this across the board, it would be an easy job. Easy. Uh, and I'm sure you do have great students. I know you do at Bloomsburg. But tell us a little bit from the experts' side of the equation how that balancing act uh, can be met. Well, from the time a student matriculates at the university, we try and make sure that there's multiple opportunities in the environment to where students can either ask for help, where they understand how to be proactive, um, and also resources like what uh, Ruben talked about, if they kind of get off track, that there are uh, de different mechanisms to kind of help them get back on track. So it's very common at an orientation program, you'll have uh, conversations about time management, about how to manage work plus your engagement opportunities on campus and off campus. And even a lot of times our financial aid personnel will talk to a student who either has work study or is interested in working off campus about being proactive, having conversations with your employer about what are your realistic expectations. And we want our students, if they, particularly if they're working off campus, that supervisor may not be as attuned to the academic calendar. So working in advance about when your finals are or talking when you get into trouble with your academics is really important. Mm -hmm. And there's all the different support resources. So tutoring, um, academic advisement, academic coaching, all of those offices in addition to people in student activities, people in residence life that's can a, help. That's a great segue to uh, Westchester University. We've got a package here. Let's visit Westchester and let's see how they take uh, the spin on student life at Westchester University. Hello, my name is Kenneth Johnson. I'm a MSW student. Thinking about social work, uh, my area of concentration is more macro. I see my future probably more in the, uh, on the administrative side, maybe managing a um, social work program or, or eventually moving to that level of managing a social work organization. I, I knew in the field I had for my level of, with my undergraduate degree, I'd gone as far as I could just even um, being able to be influential on um, policies and procedures um, at work. And, and I had reached that, that point where, you know, my ability to influence the work environment had pretty much leveled out. And I needed that advanced degree so that I could come in and um, influence some of the changes that I felt um, needed to happen, especially for the um, youth and the juveniles. That, that's the population that I work with. My name is Malika Brown. I am in the RN to BSN program here at the Philadelphia campus. I went to a two-year nursing school and graduated in 2010. I became a registered nurse. I currently work in an outpatient dialysis unit. I knew that I had to return to school. I always wanted to get a BSN. And when I heard about the Philadelphia campus's RN to BSN program, I decided to check it out. I knew that Westchester's Philadelphia campus offered this hybrid program where I could be in the classroom and have face-to-face -face time with my professors and other students, and I could also have the flexibility of being online and learning at home. The class sizes are actually pretty small. I may have 15 to 20 students in the class with me. Uh, I really like that because I get to know the other students and working with other nurses, it's almost like we're networking sometimes. It's just really comfortable. Being a full-time worker, um, 
it, it fit with my schedule, um, meaning that they had the um, night hours, the hours after work hours that would allow me um, to pursue the MSW and not interfere with work. The convenience um, was a major selling point. It has definitely improved my, my practice and the way that I actually work with the youth and, and the families. There's also a better understanding of what they're going through and why they react the way that they do. I would definitely recommend Westchester University's Philadelphia campus. In fact, I've recommended it to someone I went to nursing school with the first time and she is actually here. So I think the quality of the education here is great. In 1934, 22 people started a financial cooperative. PSECU was born out of necessity, out of a need to provide service to people who needed it most. Since 2000, we've been forging strong relationships with educational partners across Pennsylvania, making strategic investments that benefit all members, including students, faculty, and staff, and alumni at over 20 university and college locations across Pennsylvania. Learn more about what we offer students at pscu.com students. The world of the student, on campus, off campus, in the community, in the classroom. I think oftentimes people look at students and universities and think how pastoral it all looks. It must be so quiet and calm working through the day with students. We have 100,000 students who are all human beings, who have difficulties, challenges, emotional issues. We have students transitioning in as new students, but also students who are trying to work their way out with that important degree. Students who work, students who don't. Let's talk just for a few minutes, panel members, uh, about the issue of challenges that some of our students face from time to time. All people do. But when a student is struggling on uh, campus, either in the classroom, academically, or socially, emotionally, talk a little bit to me about how those kinds of things are addressed. And Ruben, let's start with you. I can say, uh, especially being in the res life aspect of the world, uh, student life, in that position, uh, they put a lot of stress on how to uh, manage your time, like we spoke in the last segment, and also about how to uh, seek out for help. Most first-year students, they tend to not want to seek out for help because it's kind of like a sign of weakness, unless somebody asks them if they're okay. And my role as an RA, uh, seeing most of the first-year students, whenever I'm walking down the hallway, I usually ask them how their classes are going, and I kind of give them a little bit of an advice on if they didn't perform well on the exam to go talk to their professors, uh, because it might just be that one thing that might see that, that your professor may see that you're willing to put in the work to uh, get that good grade that uh, you are trying to obtain. So little things like that, and also telling them about other resources that we have, such as the Learning Center as, as well, uh, to kind of guide them into the right direction of completing their uh, academic year. Angela, do you find that being sort of a direction giver uh, is helpful, knowing what resources are available to students that are struggling and hopefully sending them in the right direction? I, I definitely do, um, especially with being a campus tour guide and getting to know all the different resources that we have. It makes being an orientation leader a, a lot easier um, because students coming in and kind of like Ruben said, um, sometimes they're a little bit, they think they're a little too cool for school um, and those resources aren't. Um, really available when when they are and um, I think that knowing kind of what's always going around on the campus is really helpful um, especially with I know our student senate our student body government last year um, they had a ton of different things where if you were stressed out you can go to the Cub NPR we had the little um, with financial aid unfortunately not being dispersed um, very well they put on different things um, that you can go in and have a free meal um, or they're always advertising for different things on campus to help out that's with the a students. great example last year because of some of the budget constraints mm -hmm. uh, in Harris money for financial aid wasn't flowing in the traditional manner and our universities had to step up and really go the extra mile to help make sure that no students were compromised as a result of that. Dr. Somerville, you helped to coordinate so many of these services for Bloomsburg. Your take? 
I think that both of our students are absolutely correct, and it's important for us to make sure that we are listening to our students. Um, when Ruben was talking about residence life and how he is really one of the first people that a student might go to, and it's important for that information to go through the different mechanisms and services we have on campus. A lot of our campuses now have behavioral intervention teams or care teams, and so a lot of times our undergraduate students are the first ones to see when one of their peers um, is really having some difficulty. Um, and so these teams are often interdisciplinary, often, you know, work with Dean of Students Office counseling, things of that nature, to where they can help a student get back on track and get the resources that they need. Well, I know that parents are oftentimes given a great deal of comfort through the orientation process when they find out how many services are available to their sons and daughters should they need that during the course of their university experience. This is a good time to move to Mansfield University, which has a very vibrant student life component. Let's see what the people at Mansfield are all about. My name is Mackenzie Hafer, and I'm a junior here at Mansfield. I'm a business administration major with an emphasis in accounting and a minor in economics. I'm a legacy student here at Mansfield. My great-great-grandmother went here when Mansfield was still the normal school. And then my parents met here, and they actually met here uh, over the summer during grad courses. My oldest sister, Mallory, went here and she met her husband here, Brent. And then my sisters, who are twins, Morgan and Meredith, also went here. I wanted Mansfield because it was affordable and a good quality education. When I came here to visit, I actually got to sit in on some business classes. And after I sat in on them, the professors actually sat down with me and talked to me, which was really special for me. It helped, me, it helped make my decision easier. Business is a major that actually encompasses all of my strengths. I could bring everything that I'm good at and put it all into one major. And then accounting is kind of the language of business and it has a place for everything. I live on campus here at Mansfield. I'm in Sycamore, which is a residence hall. I chose to live on campus because I think it's more convenient. Uh, it's also really nice. The residence halls here are a lot like apartments. We have our own bedrooms, our own bathrooms and showers. We have our own heat control settings as well. At my time at Mansfield, I have been involved in a lot of different areas. I played women's basketball my freshman year. I was also involved in the Student Government Association. And then now I actually applied um, and became a student representative on the Council of Trustees for Mansfield. The Council of Trustees is kind of like a school board, but for colleges, um, we do a lot of work with the president. We evaluate facilities, we set fees for students. I'm also the president of Enactus, which is a business organization. The purpose of Enactus is to do philanthropic projects that help better the community around you while teaching the members of Enactus different professional and business skills. One of the biggest reasons that I picked Mansfield was because it felt like a home away from home for me. And that was really important for me because it was my first stepping off point as a more independent adult. So for me, Mansfield represents that independence with also a familiarity to it, which I think is something that students should consider when they're looking at colleges. We're back with our panelists, and this week's topic is the issue of student life. Over 100,000 students in our 14 state-owned universities who are such an important part, not only of the classroom and laboratory experience, but a big part of that student life experience. So with us today, again, Dr. Dion Somerville, uh, who is the Vice President for Student Affairs at Bloomsburg University. Also two students from Shippensburg University, but not just students, they are very involved in student life for the student body at Shippensburg University. Ruben Bordeaux, a finance major there, as well as Angela Mason, who is a human resource management major. I wanna start uh, on, on a topic that is um, unique in two ways. It is unique because it is targeting traditional students, those students that we've talked about who live on campus in the residence halls. They are there as part of the meal plan. So they are there 24 seven during their university experience. But there's also another population of students, the non-traditional, the commuter students, uh, students who every day get in the car or, or get on the bus, make their way to campus, and then back home or back to their apartment at the end of the evening and trying to keep everyone involved in that great 
great student quality of life experience. Uh, Dr. Somerville, of course, this is your baby. This is what you do. Uh, talk to us a little bit about those two worlds and how you try to knit them together. We want to make sure that our commuter students feel as though campus is their home, even if they choose not to live on campus. And so it's important that we have things like a commuter lounge, where understanding that their needs are different uh, during the day, they may not choose to go to the dining hall or have a dining plan, and so making sure they have a place to call home. We also want them to engage in campus life as much as possible. When you consider the transition from high school to college, college students presumably have a lot more free time in their days, um, and we want to make sure that students fill that time with important engagement activities like being involved in clubs, being involved in organization, having a job on campus, something that connects them because we know that connected and engaged students have a higher chance of retention mm -hmm. than those who are not. That's and so we feel that's point. Really important. Excellent point. Ruben, you and Angela do this for a living uh, in a different way because you're also students. So tell us a little bit, Ruben, about how you approach this issue. Uh, the issue with uh, commuter students and uh, traditional mm -hmm. students, I could see a higher involvement rate uh, with the students that do live on campus uh, due to, to the fact that they're first year students, everything that they need is right there. Uh, they could get out of their 10 o'clock class, go to the building, take a nap real quick, and then uh, go uh, off to their 12 o'clock class or something like that. But uh, I could say that Shippensburg University does take a stand to uh, get most of our community, stu community students involved. Uh, I, I remember that there was a fight that was going on on TV not too long ago, and they opened up our CUB, our City of Union building, to the fight where multiple students came out and sat there and enjoyed Chinese food uh, brought to us by our activity program board directors. Mm -hmm. And we just sat there and enjoyed our, uh, our time together. So whether you were a full-time student or a part-time student or a commuter yes. student, everybody could come out and enjoy. Yes, yes. That's and great. That's how everybody was able to uh, come together in Excellent. a sense. Angela, how about you? Uh, well, it's actually an interesting topic for me. Um, right now with the orientation team and the orientation committee um, specifically, we're trying to actually create a commuter student organization on our campus. Um, so a couple weeks ago, we had our first commuter student meeting, um, and we got really good feedback. We created surveys. Um, and our commuter students really don't feel a part of the campus. Um, and that was something that really, um, it, I'm very passionate about trying to create that home and create that feeling. Um, and I've been looking at other PASHI schools like Bloomsburg and Westchester, actually trying to see what everyone else does for their commuter students. So hopefully we're going to use that data in the near future and really create um, more of an inclusive environment for their success at SHIP. Well, it is an extraordinary tapestry of people who come together every day and make up our 14 state-owned universities in the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. I could talk to you three all day about this because students is, uh, is my favorite topic and uh, your contributions to their experience is greatly appreciated. Harmonize that with the wonderful high quality education they're getting from our faculty in the classrooms and in the laboratories. It's what makes our 14 universities so special. So thank you again to Angela Mason. Uh, thank you, Ruben Bordeaux, and thank you, Dion Somerville, for thank being you. with us on yet another segment of Infinite Opportunities. And very importantly, thanks to you, our viewers. And we hope you'll come back to learn more about the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education on Infinite Opportunities. I'm Frank Brogan. Thank you. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online.